Fish on. Fish on, buddy. Fish on. Didn't take long. First still had trip of 2022 for me. I've been here about 15 minutes. That's a nice one too. Junior! Junior, get out here! Reel in that pole, bud. Real fast. Actually, it's fine. You can leave it. We got a fish on. Man, we just got here. That's a nice one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fish on. First steelhead of the year. Are you recording? Yep. Is the light blinking? We're recording. Slammed it. Keep an eye on that pole in case it, yours gives a fight too. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Casey has just in the middle of texting you when I got this bite. You just told me you hope we catch a fish. Casey's my special lady friend, in case you were all wondering. Slammed it. You gonna kiss him? No. Oh, fish off. Fish off, that's okay. That was fun while it lasted. Hey. Back to the baby. <laughs> All right. Well, pretty typical to lose the first one of the year. We'll get another one. Well, <clears throat> well, I suppose I should show you guys what I'm running. Just got a single swivel, five ounce weight with a drop. Got a 15 pound leader with about three feet. Got a two out hook, two beads, and this big chartreuse and orange spin wheel. I can't remember the what the technical size is, but it's pretty good size. I still had chomped it. It's unfortunate it didn't stick around, but that's all right. I was just happy to play with one. I don't know if you guys can see that seam out there where the calm water meets the Swifter water, pretty definite seam. Anyway, when you're still head plunking, you want to be pretty much right on that seam. They're going to travel right up that. They're going to take the path of least resistance, but they like the security of the faster water and the riffles. Show you where I cast this here. I'm going to cast just beyond the seam and I'm going to let it, I'm going to flip the bell and let it settle in. 
like that. See if we can do it again. We've only been here 15 minutes. That was a pretty good start to the day. My son's running the same setup, but with a pink spin glow and a little bit smaller also. Let's do it again. I gotta show you guys what my son has on. My two favorite spin glows, the pink and the chartreuse and orange. I don't use bait while I'm plunking. You can, and it works well. But I know when I have a bite, it's a steelhead, not a trout. I think this one's got the one knot hook. A little bit smaller spin glow. Two beads, pink. Same 15 pound liter. Dropper to a five ounce lead. Running 30 pound main line. That's the setup. Pretty simple. Again, you can see the one we lost with this bigger one. I have, pretty, I have confidence in a smaller one too though. You can see the size difference. When the water is real dirty and brown, I'll stick with this bigger size. But it's a nice pretty steelhead green today, so this smaller one should work just fine. Again, there's that seam, that line of travel they're going to be on. That's where you want to be. Cast just beyond it, stop it, kind of drag it back into it. When you cast and stop it, you make sure your leader lays out flat. That way it doesn't get all tangled up, at least not near as often. So always cast beyond the seam, stop it, and just kind of pull it in toward it. Seems like you get snagged less too than just giving it a bunch of slack. I'll go ahead and cast my sons for them. Actually, this one's mine. I just cast my sons. Right there. What's that? There's a dead rat over there. A dead rat? I smelled it. No, it's a dead salmon. It smells gross. Let's show the sand. Let's show the camera. It's actually a big <laughs> dead salmon. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I didn't even notice that. What? Ew. It's a salmon. Looked like it was a 35 pounder. It has something in its mouth. At least. Look at the jaws on that thing. Uh, it has something in its mouth. Is that a bird in its mouth? That's its gills. Oh. Yep, went up and spawned, did its thing. And then you just sit around to die. That last high water probably flushed it up in here. <laughs> it's pretty stinky. Mm -hmm. That was a hog. That was probably a 35 pounder. Ew. That's the cycle of life here on the river. I learned about that. Yep. These dead salmon actually help feed, give nutrients back to the river. How they get born here, there's a red, they hatch. Yeah, yep, they spend a few months in the river as smolt, and then they head to the ocean, stay in the ocean for, I think it's typically three to four years. Some come back sooner as jack salmon, but then they come up and spawn and the cycle starts all over again. So, I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an instructional video to fill it in. I like using these pool noodles. They're cheap. Dollar store. Cut them into eights. Cut little slits in them. Keeps all my leaders nice and tidy. I figured I'd uh, go ahead and show you how to tie up a leader. The way I do it. Multiple ways. I can find a hook in here. Here's one. One with a little line still on it. I usually do all this stuff at home. So. These little things are handy. You gotta attach to my fish bag at all times. Saves your teeth if you have the bad habit of biting your line. <clears throat> anyway, show you guys how this is done. After I fiddle with this old line on here. 
Another thing I wanted to show you guys, lead weights are expensive. You can take a bottom of a soda can, see that? If you have the capabilities of pouring lead at home, fill it up to the brim of the bottom of the soda can, get some pliers, stick a swivel in there. That's a cheap lead weight. And these can weigh between four and six ounces depending on how full you pour it. If you go right to the rim of the can, it's about four and a half to five ounces. You can overfill it a little bit and it'll be about six. Anyway, good little trick. Nice cheap weight, they actually don't get snagged very well. And I think the way I have this swivel position kind of helps unsnag it better than straight off the side. It seems to be the case. All right, 50 pound <clears throat> Maxima Ultra Green, good strong stuff. You can get away with heavier line while plunking, but I've always had good luck with 15 pound. We still got a rod out there fishing, I gotta keep an eye on it. So anyway, this is the egg loop knot I tie. I've been told I do it backwards. I was taught by my left-handed dad, so maybe that's why. Put it in the eye. Hold it all together like that. Just make sure you keep a firm grip. Make a nice big loop. Makes it easier. Hold those two loops together, just like that. As soon as you get that pinch down, it's really easy. You grab this in, wrap it about seven, eight times. No real science. I wouldn't go any less than five, though. You can go more, whatever you're comfortable with. Just like that. You take this tag in. Usually I do this with my teeth, but I can show you guys better like this. Pull it out. Until it's tight. And even though I don't use bait while plunking, it's a really good strong knot. Really strong. And if I do decide to use bait at some point, then I got the bait loop. Pull that out, hook some row on, put the row in the bait loop, cinch it tight. Works really well. Cut off the tag in. Need a new pair, these are getting dull. I like to run about three feet. What I'll do is extend my arm, I'll go to my shoulder a little bit beyond. I know you can't see that in the camera, but that's, that's how I measure all my leaders. Probably a little more than three feet. Well, after you have your leader tied, like I said, around three, three and a half feet. I don't like to go much shorter than that, but you can go longer. You get two beads. It's a really simple setup, anybody can do it. It's easy relaxing way of fishing too. You just cast it out there and watch your pole. Sit in your rig on a rainy day, listen to music. Hang out with your partner, whatever. Yep. So you got your two beads. This hook's a little smaller than what I normally use for this big size spin glow, but it will work. I kind of like a two watt for these bigger ones. If you guys know the sizes of spin glows you can let me know i've never paid much attention i know they have a number to the size but i just call these the large ones large and medium that's how i classify them and they both work well i like the larger ones and more colored water you know what let's throw this medium one on it fits this hook better one out hook for medium spin glow two out for a large i think it's just a confidence thing makes me feel better you don't really want to put a real big hook on these smaller spin glows because it'll weigh it down. You want it, you want it sitting in the current spinning, keeping up off the bottom. If you have a real heavy hook, it'll get down there and that's not where you want it. You want it right in their face or maybe even just above. These salmonoid species feed looking up. If you get it right in their face, I think it just pisses them off. And that's why they bite it. And when you're still head plunking, what you're doing is you're in one spot, but the fish are moving, they're traveling upstream. So you want to hit that, that line where they're traveling. And I explained it a little bit earlier. There's always a little inside seam. It's typically where they like to travel. Definitely narrows your odds down. 
that's really it. Tie on a swivel, which I suppose I could show you. I just use a regular fisherman's knot, nothing fancy. Seven, eight, nine twists. Always wet your knot so you don't get line burn, it'll weaken it. I've been using this knot my whole life and I've rarely ever have fish break my knots. A lot of people frown on this fisherman's knot, but there's nothing wrong with it. Caught 140, 180 pound thresher sharks with a fisherman's knot. So. so there's your leader. I don't have a spare rod to tie it to right now, but I'll show you how I like to tie on my lead droppers. Get a decent amount of line there. You can use a three-way swivel for this process. These one-ways work just fine. Again, regular fisherman's knot. Seven, eight times. Just like so. So you can either tie this directly to your weight or what I like to do in case I get snagged up. This actually gives it a weak point I'll just tie a double loop knot. If you're short on lead, I wouldn't use this method because you're more prone to losing your weight. But when I tie these, or excuse me, when I pour these, they're so cheap, I'm not too concerned about losing a lot of lead besides polluting the river that is. Anyway, double loop knot gives you a weak point where that knot is. That way it breaks off easier than the rest of your gear <clears throat> so you can still retrieve your spin glow and hook most of the time besides that i like to turn that down that 90 degree angle i'll tie on my main line on the same part cut that little tag off i'll tie my main line right here and i like to run it up like this and it makes your leader run straight out better so there it is, that's the setup. It's real easy, that's really all you need for winter steelhead when the river's high. Bait works, in my opinion, not very necessary, but it works. I like to use these, what I call barefoot, because when I get a bite, I know it's a steelhead. I hope you all enjoyed today's episode, Junior and I. What kind of worm is this? That is a nematode, Junior just found a nematode. What is it, it's a nematode? It's like a worm, it's a parasitic worm. Uh, nope, but you know how sometimes we go fishing and there's worms in the fish fillets? That's a nematode. This is not the same kind, but it's a cousin. That's what that is. Did you have fun fishing today? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Trying He's trying to find salamanders. Well, probably not going to find many on the river bar. We have to go up in the woods. <laughs> Alright, hope you all enjoyed the episode. Maybe we'll get lucky and get another one. I can add some footage, but I think we're going to leave here pretty quick. Good luck out there. Go and try steelhead plunking. Well, while I'm at it, I may as well show you these pole holders I make too. Simple setup. You get a piece of rebar, stainless. This one, I just use some, you know, rubber hose, something you'd use like on a fishing boat or something couple hose clamps and that's it hammer it down stick your pole in like so that's an old one there one my dad made that has a little beer or soda holder attached to it looks like it could use some love but it still works and again hope you all enjoyed the episode sorry we couldn't land that fish but it was sure fun trying better to have hooked and lost than not to have hooked at all <laughs>